It's school choice week in the United States. Not in Canada, of course not. We don't really have any choice up here, do we? We've got some good schools and some really good teachers. Believe me, I meet them all the time. And there's a major difference between the quality and integrity of individual teachers in the public system and the public system itself. But whatever the ideas and the ideology, look, public education is in utter crisis. The money is simply not there anymore. It's a little like the old story of the emperor and his, uh, well, naturism. The little boy suddenly shouted, look, the emperor doesn't have new clothes at all. He's naked. He's completely naked. And the people's eyes were opened and they too saw that the emperor was nude. And they now had the courage to stare and to laugh. Simply, here we go. We will be better off, we would all be better off scrapping the entire public education system and allowing parents to spend their money on their children's education as they see fit. The system does not need to be tampered with, it needs to be destroyed. This is the only way to remove the destructive power of the teachers' unions, allow bad teachers to be fired and empower the better ones, the vast majority, to promote excellence and to end the silly mythology that has held us back for so very long. Are you in doubt? Well, look, here's a, a list just for starters. Large class sizes are a problem. Oh, come on. It's a, a ghostly fetish that has to be exercised. There were large classes for, for years, decades, generations in Canadian schools, and they produce highly literate, civilized young people. It's less the number of people in the class than the quality of the person in charge. Kids get along and are socialized in public schools. Oh, this is absolute rubbish. Look, wealthy people live in wealthy areas and send their children to schools attended by offspring of other wealthy people, unless they are really left wing and the children go to enormously expensive private schools, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year. Stephen Lewis and Michelle Landsberg, hello, sending little son Avi to Upper Canada College. Good example. Or half the bloody liberal establishment. You have a look, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars so their brats don't have to mix with the horrible, ordinary people's children. Like grasps to like. Ethnic groups do sometimes mix, mix in public schools, but there are groups and gangs and all sorts of segregation. As for socialization, it, it's largely meaningless. And anyway, kids are socialized in all sorts of places. It's not the job of schools to socialize, but to educate. Some of the most mature and well-adjusted young people I've ever met are homeschooled. Children are not indoctrinated into any religion or ideology in the public system. No, you know that's not true. You know it's not true. Moral relativism, sexual deviancy. Uh, Kathleen Wynne, you Ontario Premier, what's she trying to introduce immediately? These are core values, and to not believe in them is to be a heretic worthy of, of metaphorical flame. Secular humanism has become aggressively fundamentalist within the public school system. Kids receive a first-class education in public schools. Well, mm, too little homework, too few expectations, an acceptance of the down market and a fear of challenging kids and, God forbid, failing them. Public education was supposed to, to end illiteracy. Well, it did, but that was many years ago. For about a generation now, the slide has been the other way, and teenagers are being accepted into, into universities without the ability to spell basic words and with no grasp of concepts, history, or original thought. If you doubt me, ask people who teach at university what first-year students are like. The public system is free. Well, it's not free. It costs a fortune and is extravagant and generally inefficient. Bureaucratic, political, it fails pupils, parents, and teachers who want to do the right thing. So it's naked, absolutely naked. Get dressed and grow up and give us back our money. Freedom and choice, qualities as Canadians we are supposed to respect.